just as new homes will burn. And old homes are not any more likely to burn than a new house. It's the people in the, the house and their activities that will cause most of the fires. A kitchen fire doesn't matter if it's an old house or a new house. We've had an awful lot of fires in new houses <laughs> since we passed our ordinance. And the sprinkler systems have worked extremely well. And the other, other part of that is how long does it take for a new house to become an old house? Is it five years now? Is it 10 years? Is it 20 years? The houses we built 20 years ago, would they be considered old houses? Well, here in Scottsdale, our old houses have sprinkler systems. Today's houses are built in such lightweight construction, pre-engineered trusses, pre-engineered floor joists, and the walls are being so much different than they used to be, the wall coverings. But more importantly, with these pre-engineered trusses and floor joists, we're seeing houses fail very quickly. There's been many studies being conducted at this time to see what can be done to make this light construction, lightweight construction, more safe for our firefighters. There are some significant issues with, with the construction features of the of, of new construction in, in this era when there is a fire in that structure. For instance, lightweight truss construction. In one short generation, let's say 30, 40 years, the home environment has changed significantly. We've gone from products that were based primarily on natural materials such as wood, wool, cotton fibers, to now primarily all the products that we purchase are synthetic based materials, oil based synthetic materials. These synthetic materials have a higher heat of combustion, meaning they have more energy per unit pound or per unit mass. In addition to that, we found that the home environment typically now includes many products that we did not have 30, 40 years ago. Multiple television sets, computers, other types of products which are made of these synthetic materials. So the overall fuel load has increased not only in terms of the materials used, but the bulk of the materials as well. So what's the bottom line? The age of a home in itself is not a significant factor in determining fire risk, in part because the age of a home has nothing to do with the three main causes of fire, men, women, and children. While it is true that there are more fires in older homes versus new homes, this has to be expected given that the median age of homes in the United States, according to a recent HUD study, is 32 years. By sheer numbers, a lot of people live in older homes. But no matter whether a home is old or new, there's one group of people who are always at risk when a home burns. Firefighters. Hi, I'm David Kerr, Fire Marshal for the City of Plano, Texas. I'm very familiar with the benefits of fire sprinklers to the fire service and to firefighters. I hope you'll talk about these important benefits with your audience. The whole idea with residential sprinklers is to provide a means to deal with fires and structures in a quick and efficient manner to hold the fire in check and potentially to extinguish it. What that does in the relationship with the fire service is it, it creates less of a dangerous environment to firefighters because it's providing that control mechanism to keep that fire from getting out of hand. We've seen a dramatic reduction uh, in uh, fires in the United States, but the number of firefighter fatalities per 100,000 structure fires is exactly the same in 2006 as it was in 1978. And one of the primary issues, one of the drivers here has got to be firefighter safety. You know, if we can, if we can prevent a fire, if we can extinguish it quickly, if we can contain it, that is the best firefighter safety we can have. Well, here in Scottsdale, the safety applies to everybody. It applies to all the citizens, it applies to the community, and it also applies to our firefighters. This has to be one of the safest communities to be a firefighter in because most of the fires, or a lot of the fires, will be contained with the automatic sprinkler system activation. The purpose of NFPA 13D is to prevent flashover. This is the first line of defense once a fire breaks out to prevent flashover. And as a fire chief, I have the responsibility to ensure that for the safety of our firefighters. Well, it's pretty clear that residential fire sprinklers can be a valuable tool in protecting a community's firefighters. And to put a perspective on what our group of experts just said, I'd like to share with you a couple of cold hard facts that we in the fire service simply cannot ignore. First off, firefighters are at greater risk fighting fires in one and two family dwellings than any other single occupancy group. Almost half of the line of uh, death duty fatalities occur in these occupancies. 
But looking beyond fatalities, it is also true that more firefighters are injured in the line of duty in one two family dwellings than any other single occupancy classification. While some people might simply dismiss injuries as unimportant as compared to fatalities, a firefighter injury can have a great consequence not only to the firefighter and his or her family, but to the community as a whole. Consider this, simply from a financial perspective. The cost to a community related to long-term care for a disabled firefighter who is injured in the line of duty can be as much as 10 times the benefits paid out to the line of duty death person. In fact, the cost of a health care for a firefighter who is severely burned in a flashover can be as much as a million dollars in just a year. This can be a tremendous financial burden to a small community with only a few firefighters. Okay, it's time to change gears. Now that we've spent some time talking about the need for residential sprinklers, let's explore exactly what a residential sprinkler system is.